Nine and a half for the Packers. So a game behind the Lions. I mean, I want to say over for them too. What are your thoughts on the Packers? Yeah, I mean, one of the most interesting teams in the league because of this youth movement. They feel like a sort of they feel like the trap everybody falls into when they play football manager for any extended period of time, which is just having like an entire squad full of 21-year-olds and and continually replacing anybody that reaches like the age of 26 with another exciting young wonder kid prospect and never actually sort of creating the like the team that is old enough to be amazing, right? Like you're just constantly planning for the future. Except, so for the second year in a row, they're going to have the youngest roster in the NFL. But the difference is they look like last season that they were prepared to win with that kind of roster. Like they went on this run late last season. Jordan Love looked fantastic. They went into the playoffs and, you know, could have potentially upset uh, the one of the best teams in the league and said, except they didn't play at that level. Like, whether it was the rain or whether it was simply a bad game, they didn't play at the level they'd been playing at for the the sort of previous run and ultimately fell short. But so they then come into this year again with the youngest roster in the league, having tinkered around with it a bit. But I think it presents this wide range of outcomes where if any significant number of, of that youth movement takes a significant step forward in development over the course of an off season, or just, you know, by getting a year older and you're more experienced and blah, 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 they could be really, really good. Um, or because you're relying on so many young players, like there's just always the capacity for that to go South in a hurry. And suddenly they're just not anywhere near as good as they look like they were going to be at the second half of last season. So I feel like Green Bay is one of those teams that has a really broad range of outcomes. I know everyone's going to skew optimistically because of the young players. It's just, it's automatically what you do. Youth equals hope equals potential. Um, But I do think there's like a, there's a big negative potential as well that we're just sort of not really going to acknowledge. You're way too realistic here, Sam. I'm buying into the youth movement. I buy it. I mean, the the one thing I'll say is, it, to me, it depends on the second half of the year. Jordan Love, right? I mean, it's not he's not the only quarterback to ever have a great second half in his youth, where it's like, okay, that's what he is from now on. Right. I mean, last year at this time, we were saying the same thing about Trevor Lawrence. It was Trevor Lawrence's second year, and if you, depending on where you put the cutoff, and it was like, oh, since week eight or since week nine. Trevor Lawrence is QB two in I mean, PFF grading, and Baker Jordan Love Mayfield is similar. Had a year like that, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield had a year where he I, similar. I forget where the cutoff was, but he was in the top three of quarterbacks in the NFL in terms of grade, in terms of a bunch of other stuff from a significant portion of the year. Like it was at least half the season. God damn it! I've, I've stop. Go back. Uh, if you if you just cut off Baker Mayfield for like half a year plus, was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And it didn't happen, didn't sustain. Right. So, I'm again, Packers fans, just hear me out. I'm not trying to temper expectations for Jordan Love. I have great expectations for Jordan Love. The difference between the first half of the season where the accuracy was a little scattershot, and I've, I've heard the – we've heard the feedback. You know, the receivers were young and they weren't on the same page. It wasn't as bad. It wasn't great, though. It wasn't great. The offense – remember, I, I used the statement, it looked like – the Packers were playing with different playbooks. Like the QB room and the wide receiver room had different playbooks. They were not on the same page. And then all of a sudden, week eight, nine, whatever that cutoff is, whatever you want to use, but specifically after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and beyond, Jordan Love had all sorts of Aaron Rodgers-esque type of throws. But for me, forget Rodgers and Favre and all those comps. The confidence that Love played with, the confidence to stand in there, to make plays, to trust his arm, and then put the ball into incredible spots for just his receivers to go up and get the ball, the big-time throws that Love had. I mean, it was awesome. And you pair that with the actual narrative that the Packers drafted him back in 2020, and they were supposed to systematically develop him. And so when a switch is flipped, it's like, oh, that's what we expected because he was a developmental prospect and he has developed. That's why the narrative is pretty clean on Love. But all that to be said, we've seen, all I'm trying to say is we've seen eight game stretches and 10 game stretches of really good play. And that's not necessarily the goal for a quarterback. Now you have to adjust to defenses adjusting to you. Now you have to remain consistent. And so those are my questions for love. I saw plenty of special 
last year with Love. Very impressed. Unbelievable what he did down the stretch. Now let's see that consistency. And I, and I think he, I think they have it in them. But now let's see some ebbs and flows, not just like, hey, we're hot right now and everything's going great. As you mentioned, it was not a good finish to the season. They had a chance to win that game against San Francisco on the road in the playoffs to get to the NFC Championship, and, and, and it wasn't good. So love those receivers, a good enough offensive line, plus you've got the you know defensive coordinator change on defense with Jeff Halfley coming in. I think there's a lot to be excited about. I'll take the over for the Packers. I just can't wait to see what happens with love and his, you know, 17-week consistency here in his second year as a starter. Yeah, it, it just comes down to answering the question, was the second half of last season real for Jordan Love, or was it just one of those runs which we know can happen? Like, we, in football, and the NFL analysis in particular, we are creatures that like to create patterns or like to see patterns, identify patterns, but they don't always exist. So... And when a bunch of things, like there, there's a lot of reasons that make sense for Jordan Love to have that kind of half of season, right? We've got that sort of Aaron Rodgers development plan for him. So it would make sense, right? He's going to be a little bit struggle or struggle a little bit, be a little bit rusty, however you want to phrase it for the first half, gelling with these young receivers. And then at some point it's going to come together and now he's just amazing. And they've done it again and Green Bay is you know, identified their quarterback ahead of time. They've developed him on the right pathway, and now they've got their next version of Aaron Rodgers. On the other hand, we've been, each of us have been watching the NFL for too long to just be unaware that that kind of thing has happened before. And whereas you thought there was a pattern there, it's it's disintegrated, right? And again, Baker Mayfield is just one example I can think of where that existed we were we would have been saying similar things, right? Amazing rookie year, struggled with the Freddie Kitchen stuff, and okay, let's throw that out. Doesn't count. That's not the real Baker. And then we had this run from like whatever that cutoff point was, where he's a top three quarterback. Now Baker's arrived, and it just doesn't always work that way. So, you know, I, all the reasons are there to be optimistic for Green Bay. The youth movement, the second half of the season that Jordan Love did have. I think the defense coordinator change is an upgrade as well. Like that thing should help. I'm with you. I, I, I'm going to lean over with them because I'm, I am buying into the optimism, but you have to be aware of the potential negative as well, because we've just seen that manifest too many times to just think it's all, it's all sunshine and roses. There's no downside here.